mal tu plé. Oi, oi, come out to play. Oi, oi, come out to play. Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. from my homeboy Daniel. Mm. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome back for the second time, yep. Megan Holiday. <laughs> hey, so good to see you too. It's been a while. I know, it's been too long, dude. Cheers. It's been years. I think I came through before the pandemic even happened. So I feel like it could have been 2018, I want to say, dude. You know what? Cheers. We're both sobes, ginger beer. How much time you got left? I'm going to have eight years in January. I know. So shout out to sobriety. So shout out to sobriety. Is, is it, uh, so was it off there too? Oh, I just turned it off. Oh, all so right, shout, cool. so shout out to sobriety. Sobriety's cool. Um, and um, w- and then shout out to our homie off the grid Ryan. Um, we we he he brought you up the other day because uh, we were t- he was he, I was like we we're in Malibu and he, I'm like he's you know we're trying to figure out what because I'm like I'm, I want to like figure out what he's gonna do and I'm like you should work in recovery and he mentioned that you had an interest in working in recovery. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. Well, first of all, shout out to Ryan. I just adore him so much. He is just the best person. And I watched that whole adventure that you guys went on, Mm -hmm. which we definitely need to talk more about Mm -hmm. because that was so cool. And I want to go on the next adventure with you guys. Ghost hunting? Um, Yeah, let's go ghost hunting. Let's, like, find the aliens. You know what I'm saying? You're down to do that? I'm down, dude. I love that shit. And I wanted to commend you. Uh, we both commended you uh, on your necklace. Yeah. And what does that signify? Okay, so this is Archangel Michael or Saint Michael, and the reason I got this because I'm not religious. I'm a spiritual person. Okay, um, I thought that was like Catholic. But uh, yeah, but you know, I uh, the reason I got this was I actually did this cord cutting ceremony with my psychic medium. Who I love. Her name's Danielle. She's awesome. Can we give her? Yeah. Does she? Um, you can like find a- her on Instagram at Intuitive Angels, and she actually lives in Vegas. Um, so we do it on the phone. But I was having some issues with an individual that I have to see often, and demonic energy. Um. Yeah. There was definitely just some kind of weird thing, and so. I asked her about this person and she's like, you have some crazy past life stuff with this guy. And she gave me the scoop, which was like, <laughs> do you want to hear it? Yeah, okay, please. Okay. Please. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like you so caught my interest. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically this guy, this was like back in like Egyptian times or something like that. And, um, I was, so I guess we were both of Royal descent um, but I was from another country, so I was not as considered as royal as him. I was more of like under him. And so he married me as kind of like a trophy wife situation. And he would kind of use me just to like parade around. But at home, 
he was like super abusive and would like keep me locked up and blah blah blah. So it's like Game of Thrones, kind of like how they had a yeah, it was gnarly. Know, like the Starks and then this other house, yeah, combining the houses, yeah, keep going. And so she told me all this, and then she's like, "Listen, we can do a cord cutting ceremony." I'm like, "Okay." So we do this thing, and basically, what I have to do is like go through my imagination of these like cords and it was like in my mind when I was imagining it, it was like tentacles that were like connecting us it was like all gross and then Archangel Michael came in and used a sword and freaking slashed he, he did he slashed the sword or the yeah. cords and uh and then I did like this thing where I would like you know take out the tentacles and like heal the thing whatever so after this happened I got I bought this pendant on Etsy and I gotta tell you that whole the whole vibe is like totally different. It's like just everything. I don't know. The energy shifted. You Can know. I take a look at it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, that's Isn't cool. That cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you um, you're spiritual in that sense? Yeah. I'm so um, so this lady could tell us our past life. She can. She can. She just does like general readings. But if you want to do go into like past life stuff or even sort of like mediumship connecting with people from the other side, like I've connected with my friend Nick, who passed away, who, you know, died from like a fentanyl overdose, like big contribute. Rest contribu in peace, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like such a big factor yeah. for me getting sober. But, you know, we've like connected uh, and, so, you know, she would say things that only nick would know like oh, you know what so i mean the, so there was, was no bs involved no it was for real it was for real yeah she's she amazing knew, really yeah um now do you think our past lives like dictate w what lives we are in now i do actually i do and I, what gives you that impression i just think that i feel like somehow there's like different soul groups that you're kind of like connected with that you have to work stuff out with to where like because you know for example this individual who like by no means i'm close with but that i have to interact with on a daily basis you want to air him out not nah, really okay that's fine we'll just go we'll just say co-worker okay that's we'll fine we'll just he's just a we'll leave it at that anonymous yeah yeah and you know i don't have any ties to this person really but someone I have to interact with and it's like and then you find out you have all this like crazy past life stuff with them so I just feel like you have to kind of like work all that stuff out in each life so that you can clear that karma you know so because um when we pat when we die on in this life we're gonna come back as a it's gonna, they're gonna there's gonna be a memory wipe yeah oh yeah totally um, like I believe black flash because you know? I believe aliens have the technology to wipe your memory yeah and i think souls are involved with the uh, you know the aliens i believe this is just my hypothesis yeah. uh they um they're um certain entity groups alien entity groups are intrigued with our souls mm -hmm. and they want to um you know i think they're trying to f figuring out how to capture when we die to, uh, trying to figure out how to capture our souls somehow Ooh, that's interesting that is really interesting. And I think that maybe somehow it recycles and memory wipe and then, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why you said there's past lives, I'm sure. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but you want to know what? I really don't want to do another life again. I My feeling is like, which I've said, I'm like, I, I feel like this is either. I I'm feel done. like this is my last life. And I've always said this. How I, do we do it? I, I don't know, but I, I think here's what it is. We have to just be really good people. We have to try to, like, mend relationships. You know, like, we make amends with people and stuff. Yeah, it's like, I yeah. think that we have to, like, do that as much as possible so there's just no bad juju when we leave this life, if possible. And maybe, Ooh. yeah. Why does that hurt you? Why? Because it makes me think of my father. Yeah. Yeah. And your dad passed away, right? Yeah, yeah. three years ago. Yeah, several years ago. And uh, I think, he, yeah, I think he did. I think he's back. I, he might have recycled. Really? Yeah, because there was a lot of domestic violence. And, you know, he had, you know, he was an alcohol. He died in, a, you know, oh, okay. he with the oh, disease of okay. alcoholism. Uh -huh. And because um, you're saying that 
And I, I'm, I'm with you. I mm-hmm. don't want to. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done too. I'm done. Yeah, me too. I don't want to yeah. come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be, if I were to come back, I'd rather like, um, be like a lizard at least, or something. No, no, a bird, no, a bird or, or so at least wreck a fly yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, okay, that's good. And yeah. then I could die or another bigger bird could kill yeah, me. Totally. And then, you know, And it's a shorter lifespan. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is too long for me. How long do you want to live? Oh God. I, I really, <laughs> I don't, I honestly don't. I mean, look, I think I'd be happy to, to live somewhere in my eighties if I'm in good what? condition. Because if, because here's why, if you die too young, then the people who know and love you, they're going to be like, Oh, they died so young. And like, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to leave these other people yeah. feeling sad. But if you're past 80, then I think people are kind of like, they lived a good life. Like, you know, and mm. we were lucky to have them as long as we did. That's kind of why. Mm. But, you know, I think for people like you and I, since we want, since we're kind of like down to be like done with all this, I feel like we're going to live. A I know. Lot. Like, I, we're going to live to like 103, I know. bro. How, how do you know that? I, I feel know, that too. I know. You know, you, they have this situation. Yeah, and I, I, know. I don't want to. I know. <laughs> you know, I was just watching. I don't know why this popped up on my algorithm, but uh, remember River Phoenix? Oh, I'm obsessed. Obsessed. So it popped up on my algorithm, and I couldn't sleep, and I watched this documentary. Mm-hmm. I didn't know, A, that he died off Sunset Boulevard. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. At the, the Viper I, At the Viper Room. room. Yeah. And can and we talk brother. a little bit about that? Yeah. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't know that Joaquin mm-hmm. was actually there, and Joaquin's the, the one that made the call. Yeah. And I know that that dict, you know, that definitely. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, totally. Because I mean, I'm not saying because they're he, they're both very very talented, mm-hmm. but I'm saying you know, Joaquin looked up to River. Oh, big time! Yeah. That's like if my if Bobby if my yeah. brother died, and, you know, I, know, I don't even I can't even imagine. No, that. no. So, um, are you you're obsessed with that story? I just I. I'm just obsessed with River Phoenix. Like I remember seeing Stand By Me when I was like really young and being like obsessed with him. Yeah. And then, you know, he just he I mean, he's probably one of the best looking people I've ever you seen. You know what? I was looking at his face yeah. too. Yeah. And you know, I have a girlfriend, but I paused <laughs> it and dude, he was chiseled. Yeah, he was like the his side profile like <laughs> yeah, this uh-huh. right here and yep. his nose. Yeah. He was almost a combination of like Jude Law and Leo, but like fused mm. into one face. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Joaquin's handsome too in his own oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But He's um just so talented. And River was like he was a musician and I think he was a deep like he really cared about things like he cared about animals and the environment like he came from kind of like a hippy dippy yeah. family and then you know? they, they're part of this religious group right kind yeah, of yeah i think i feel like it was more like a spiritual thing yeah but i'm not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure on it but yeah and then one thing that caught my attention because there's i know there might be a conspiracy but in this documentary someone some musician guy handed him this cocktail mm-hmm with st- like in the glass in the drink yeah yeah, yeah. and I then know, and i was surprised that it was like in a drink that's where i was like what yeah so so, so it because we know mm-hmm. i mean kind of like you know like that takes effort to do something like that it's not like here's right. a joint they had to like extract this stuff it, you know what i mean mm-hmm. Um, I know. Was it a speedball that they that's put what I'm in thinking. the drink? Yeah, yeah, I think it yeah. was a combination of heroin and cocaine. Yeah, it was yeah. like something like that. And then plus whatever he was already on that night. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like right. which he was probably already doing stuff like drinking at least and probably doing some uppers because you know he liked to. He w- he basically became a drug addict. Like you he, know, he was would, it bad? I think it was pretty bad, and he would clean up for a bit when he would do movies and stuff. And yeah. then I think he would go down that, that dark road again. Like there's a weird interview, which may have been in, in the uh, documentary where he has sunglasses on and you can just tell he's like real, he's like fucked up and he's really pissed off at the world. And, you know, I think yeah. it just, you know, he just didn't handle the fame super well which it's it's how so pre- hard how do you prepare for something like i don't know that, that you can yeah and he was a big star like he was he really was gonna big. be like james yeah. dean yes. leonardo dicaprio yep. absolutely big yeah you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um how old was he when he passed 
God, I don't know. Was he, I don't think he was part of that 27 club. Chels, can you look that up real quick? Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking 27. Was, was it 27? I, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I kind of think it might have been. He was young, though. And yeah. then what about Kirk? 23. 23? Oh, my God. Oh, he was a young That's buck. That's horrible. Yeah. To think. And everything that he accomplished up to that point, like, oh my, you know God. what I mean? So many movies he, he put out, and, like, he was just. Yeah. Doing so Did you well. see My Own Private Idaho? Yeah. Yeah. That movie's a trip. And that's a Keanu. Gus Van Sant. Yeah. yeah. Keanu. Uh-huh. Can you describe to the viewers what that movie was kind of about, like briefly? Well, here's my memory of it. I watched it many, many years ago, but mm-hmm. I can tell you that River Phoenix's character had narcolepsy. Mm-hmm. So he would pass out in strain- at strange places, and his buddy, Keanu Reeves, would kind of look after him, take care of him. And they were basically male prostitutes right like male they were males male, of the night males of the night yeah males not of ladies the, of the night yeah, males, males of, the, of night. the night and and uh that's pretty much all i can remember there are some weird aspects of that movie remember that yeah. one um man that um picked river and he was obsessed with cl- being oh, clean. Oh yeah, and, and the he, gloves were yeah, their gloves. And yeah, rubber. Like, yeah, yeah, that uh-huh. was so. Oh weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some weird scenes. In so that. definitely, um, check that movie out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then wasn't like was River Phoenix in love with Keanu Reeves? Wasn't that kind of what it was? And then Keanu had like a girlfriend though. Yeah, they had like a bromance, and this was yeah. before like Brokeback Mountain days. Yeah, yeah. This was like back. <laughs> this is <was the> <laughs> yeah, like pre Brokeback OG, Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) but um, (laughs) it didn't bother me, though, because they're both so, I don't know, there's, because, you know, Keanu's, um, oh, yeah, right, oh, yeah, point, I mean, this is, I mean, and I heard Keanu's, like, actually, like, a normal guy, too. Oh, my God, I just, I hear the most wonderful things about that man. Me, too. You know, and I'm just like, oh, I want to meet him. I heard he rides the subway. Yeah, I know, I see all that stuff on Instagram, (laughs) you know? And then it's like he became a meme, Do you, you know, where he was like sitting outside of a, a bakery or something eating oh, really? a sandwich and it yeah. like became this whole meme of like sad Keanu. Yeah. But yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was just like he like was on a talk show and he's like, I, I was just hungry and I went in and I got yeah. a sandwich. He was just he like, seems like chilling, like eating a sandwich. Like uh, he's and he's a musician, right? Like, I, yeah, he's didn't he just perform dog at star. Amoeba? Yeah. Yeah. Dog star is back. I, I think they performed at Amoeba. They did. And then I think they did a couple shows at Troubadour or the Roxy recently yeah right? recently yeah yeah and they're play- they're playing some shows like they put out I think a couple new songs at least and they're um yeah mm. they're gonna be playing shows so what kind of music like are you still involved with music because last time you were here we kind of already went through the radio yeah days yeah, yeah yeah I mean I still work yeah I still work in at K-Rock um you know still on K-Rock 90? every day 2 to 6 p.m. and then say the diet what 9 oh 106.7 oh, 106.7 yeah, that's right mm-hmm. yeah and um is there a specific show that uh, what so kind of music alternative it's all yeah it's pretty much anytime you're listening to like mainstream radio now you're just hearing a mix of the same song so yeah it's just alternative rock from you know the 90s thousands and today you know do you play taylor swift at all no 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 it's all it's all alternative rock okay yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. sorry I didn't yeah, that no. you. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. do you know do you remember a guy named rodney bigamheimer of course yeah, yeah. rodney on I the actually, rocks yeah i actually got to work with rodney like very briefly um and i remember i was like super excited to meet him and mm-hmm. everything and then it was definitely really sad when he was kind of like let go but rodney is on sirius xm is he so, really yeah so he still has his show at can you sirius. can you describe can you explain how big of an uh like an icon yeah. he was like uh, yeah there's a I documentary mean, called mayor of yes sunset mayor strip. of sunset strip yeah so which is he really good was, uh, i mean he i mean i i don't even know how long he was on k-rock but i would say he was one maybe the longest running jock possibly he broke bands he broke bands and he was on late at night so it would be you know rodney on the rock and he would play everything and anything stuff that wasn't even the ramones yep um david bowie demos Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right oh yeah he would totally he kind of like handed a lot of 
bands their careers in a lot of ways. And he, you know, this was at a time when DJs got to actually pick their own music. You know what I mean? Now it's programming. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and he's just like this really sweet, like little, you know, he he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have a radio voice. And if you used to listen to Kevin and Bean, um, in the morning, they would always, you know, make fun of him, make fun of his little voice and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, it, but in a way, it's like I kind of I love that kind of banter in a way because oh, yeah. it makes people it would make people aware of Rodney. If yeah, anything, yeah. You know, and um, yeah, he he was just a total legend. And he would I remember he would walk into the station because I used to work at night mm-hmm. and he would come on after me. And he would walk in the station with his his little crates of CDs, like all like a bunch of crates, like with oh, all these CDs yeah. stacked up. You know, he was still just picking whatever he's he wanted a small, to play. He was a small guy. Yeah, right? small yeah, guy. Yeah. He was it. Wasn't he like um like the double of the guy from the Monkees? Was and he? he? And he was down with Sonny and Cher, like oh, took yeah, him yeah. in. Well, he Dude, that, that documentary. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They, they took him in. They took him that's in. That's right. So he was like, he was like in all these music videos back in the day, like Mamas and the Papas. Oh. And he was like, uh, uh, like Sonny and Cher took him in. And then he, dude, he was like the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the body double of like the oh, the dude from the monkeys. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's so funny, dude. That documentary is one of the best documentaries it's I've really seen. It's really good. Yeah. I haven't watched it for a long time, so there's stuff that I've definitely forgotten about. But yeah, yeah what it's a crazy sad life. too. What happened? It's so sad. I know. Well, even someone, yeah. even now, it's like honestly, I I feel like there should be a GoFundMe started for him because she should be. He she yeah exactly you know and I think even still it's a struggle you know what I mean they so did him wrong kinda I yeah you and know. his homeboy like took his copped his hustle yeah started a show like to compete with his show mm-hmm. and he's the guy that like discovered this guy mm-hmm. yeah and all this stuff yeah yeah is he alive oh yeah he lives in Hollywood. Really? Yeah, he goes to Cantor's Deli all the time. Um, yeah, and he works at he works at Sirius. Well, yeah. good. Well, at least he has, he's working. Yeah, he's working. Yeah, yeah. I just it's hard to say how much. It's just hard to say how much money anybody makes in this industry anymore. You know what I mean? Like, if how what's what you can really survive off of? I guess you know. Is it like just advertisers? There's got to be advertisers and like yeah. I don't I don't know how it works at Sirius. I've I never have worked there, so I don't know like what's what it's like he's gotta make some kind of i don't know yeah i no. don't know um but how long you been at K- k-rock um yeah. it'll be so okay my sobriety dates january january 13th and then uh i started working at k-rock in like the march after i got sober so mm-hmm. I'll, it'll be eight years for me in march that i've wow. been at k-rock which is really a trip it doesn't feel like yeah that, you know that's crazy yeah. that's crazy is it still satisfying, like just, um, you know, like just being going there and playing the music and? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think with any job that you do repeatedly, it it ebbs and flows. It's like mm-hmm. sometimes you are super in, in, into it and you're having a good time, da da da. You're in the flow, and then other times you're just kind of like, oh, it's Groundhog Day. I'm bored. Like you know. Um, But I think at the end of the day, when I break it down, I'm just like, my job is to just suit up and show up, play songs, talk in between them, talk to listeners on the phone, hook up people with tickets, you know, Mm -hmm. be grateful for this job that people would would kill for. You know what I mean? Do you think your sobriety has helped you in in your in the workplace, like being of service and like showing up on time? Oh, yeah. Totally. So it's completely like kept you on the straight. Oh, narrow. absolutely. I mean, it's it's changed everything, you know, because I had lost my career, you know, in radio previously from my drinking and using. Addiction, yeah. And I remember like pulling in to the parking structure two minutes before I was supposed to be on the air. It was, you know, I had no level of respect for what I was doing, you know, before that time. So you took it for granted. Yeah, it was, I think I just took everything for granted. I think I just didn't give a fuck about anybody mm, or anything. Y- I was just doing what I was doing, and that was it, you know? Yeah. 
Um, would you be open to like like I mentioned before? Because mm-hmm. I because I, I was thinking about uh, our homie Ryan. Yeah, yeah. And oh I'm yeah, like, I forgot cause, to cause, tell you. Because uh, yeah, I was like we we're driving. I go because we're we're trying to figure out what what his next move is. I'm like, dude, you should work in recovery. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned you. Yeah. And I'm like, w- why don't you? Because you have like, kind of you, you know you could ne- you have like you know contacts right within the sober. Yeah, whatever, I had. I definitely have like. I definitely think I know a lot of people within the recovery community and stuff. And I did found a nonprofit this year. Can we talk um, about that? Yeah. What's it's, the name it's of it? It's not launched like whatsoever. It's, it's called life of the party. And, uh, basically it's Narcan distribution on the level of, you know, being out at festivals and, um, different large gathering and events of being able to just get Narcan out into the world. And we're actually, doing something right now with USC. Um, and so, um, I don't know how much I can even talk about this, but they're ki- kind of going to help us, okay. um, you know, in figuring well, some things good, out, which is thing. great. Yeah. Um, and I don't know where it's going to go. The, uh, the whole thing came together in such a crazy way. I never really thought I was ever going to start a nonprofit, but I, like I said earlier, you know, with my buddy Nick dying from fentanyl, the first person I knew who ever died from it, um, yeah. you know, and then now seeing this massive epidemic that's going on and I it's mean, just horrible. It's crazy. I mean, and, and you have, you have like, you know, a 15 year old kid just, you know, is experimenting and takes a Xanax for the first time or a Vicodin and they don't know that it's a press pill and they're gone. And so it's like, this is not just affecting addicts. This is affecting everybody. Oh yeah. You know, and people should be able to experiment with drugs. They should be able to do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that, you know? And so Mm. I just think, um, the fact that there's not safe, uh, ways to use drugs anymore is, just insane and yeah you know it's because you because yeah it could be in a pill form it could be in coke your yeah cocaine. your coke your meth i mean anything yeah, of yeah course, my like homie heroin, almost od'd you know? on it um he was on here my homie sean um and it was you know i don't know how like detailed we got into it but yeah he almost straight up od'd oh on that oh my um, god and, like, how did he get so out? what happened because he got so pissed what saved him is i think his anger because uh he, he was so mad at the dude that burned him oh that his adrenaline was you know he, it was yeah. you know but he was he was not not you know because once um i can only i'm just kind of um i'm just guessing mm-hmm. like when you start nodding off and i think once you you go to sleep you're done yeah, and well, because you just completely stopped breathing. Yeah, his adrenaline was competing oh like my God. against that because he was like, "I want to get this fool, you know, I get this dude, I want to get this dude." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah well, that's so. so lucky. Yeah, you know, thank God. But that's it's another reason why it's like we have to normalize people just having Narcan mm. everywhere, have it in your house, like got to be in your, you know, just have it in your medicine cabinet in your car. Like people just need to like have it around because say your friend was still alert enough but he knew he kept nodding out or whatever oh, he dude. could like hit himself with narcan and know for sure he was gonna be okay you know what i mean yeah and he so he dodged a bullet that oh night, yeah for sure absolutely yeah that's such a, and just that whole epidemic it's just like the way <coughs> it got into the states and like you know oh yeah I know. I don't want to get into conspiracy. You know, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I'm and all you. that. I know. But I know. But there is. But there is. Yeah. You know, there is yeah. like, I guess, you know, like, you know, people's estimation on how it got over mm-hmm. here. But um, um, going back to like um, spirituality and like past lives. Um, are you do you does that ward off like um bad energy or like evil spirits do you believe in any of that stuff oh, definitely yeah like definitely. demonic stuff yeah absolutely i think there are a lot of energies and entities within our world and i think it's really important like you know i i like to meditate and when i do i try to imagine like a shield of white light energy just to protect like, you to protect me you know mm-hmm. because you just you just don't know and if you think about it everything in life is is vibes you know it, you walk Ooh. into a room and it's a different vibe and you go into a grocery store and it's a different vibe and you know it's like people act like people act like everything 
in life comes from like speaking words to other people, but that's really only like 5% of what is being communicated is through words. Like mm. there's like body language, there's energy and you can feel it when someone has bad energy towards you. Like I was saying, like whether it's with coworkers or, you know, like if something's going on with a friend of yours and, and you can feel it. And, oh and, yeah. You know, and, and it's like something that'll be tugging at you. You mm -hmm. know, when you walk into a room and you feel like, Oh, this person hates me. Oh my God. Like I got to get away from here. You know, and, and I think that people discount, mm. discount that a lot. Yeah. So it's like everything is energy because of quantum physics anyways. Yeah, for sure. And like a lot of going back to the aliens and stuff, a lot of them don't even communicate. They, they, you know, yeah. telepathy, yeah. they don't even have to speak. Mm -hmm. um, can I tell you one instance yeah, where um, I went to the, uh, I had a pink eye and I needed to get drops <laughs> and um, the dude there. I, I don't want to, I'm not going to air him out. Okay. But his, he, you know what he did? Like, cause I had my prescription and I was, I gave it to him and you know, it was, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Type, but he was like, Oh, this is not in our system. Like he was like, it's like fucking with you. Yeah. yeah. Cause then I went to the other pharmacy there and they got, you know, they're like, yeah, it's, this is yeah. a common thing. But the, the, then I got, it's like every time I go to the grocery store now, I see him. Oh. And it's like, I just that in weird vibe. Yeah, because yeah, I could tell that, yeah. you know, we don't, yeah. we're not on the same, you know yep. what I'm saying? Oh, it's absolutely. But he did, the, I'm like, I don't want to make it a conspiracy, but I'm just saying I could feel that energy mm -hmm. like, oh, this fool don't like me. Yeah, totally. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah. And I want to make it right, but it's just like, there's something, you know how with some people you just don't. There's something that you're not, percent. you're not clicking with yep. them. But in our thing, what we're trying to, you know, with through our program, we got to try to like clean our side of the street. Mm -hmm. And I try, but there's a part of me that still, I don't like him. Yeah. Well, in that situation, though, what is your side of the street to keep clean? You didn't do, you haven't done anything wrong. I mean, dude, my eyes, are, dude, they're puffy. Yeah. Dude, was, <laughs> you had pink eye. You wanted yeah. your prescription. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong. So, but here's the other thing that we have <sighs> to, here's what the, we have to remember. It's like with the four agreements, you know, like yeah. don't take anything personally. Right. And that's hard, dude. Go over those agreements again. What? Okay. Yeah. Because okay, I remember so the book and everything. Okay. So it's, uh, always do your best. Mm -hmm. Um, don't take anything personally. Mm -hmm. You might have to look, you might have to look. Can you look up, up the four um, agreements? Be impeccable with your word. And what they mean with it being impeccable with your word. It's not like suiting. It's not like saying I'm going to be where I tell you I'm going to be. It's like saying that your words cast spells. So the way that you talk about yourself, you know, like you don't want to just be like, Oh, I'm such an idiot. Like you don't want to talk like that. You want to be really impeccable with everything that you say. But the word, that thing that caught my attention mm -hmm. is ca casting spells. Because yeah. words are powerful. Yeah. Like there's well, there's always like energy behind spelling, it. right? It's casting spells. It's like spelling, you yeah. know? Yeah. So even like, you know how a lot of like heavy metal bands, they would do things backwards uh -huh. and they would say, say, you know, you hear Satan yes. or something. So there's stuff like where you could cast like verbal sigils to people or yeah. that's why lyrics are kind of. Yeah. Like even the Beatles did some, they had some weird things going on with their music. Back, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, I don't think that they were putting any uh, subliminal messages in there. Yeah. But they, know? me and Ryan were talking um, on Sergeant Pepper's mm -hmm. Alistair Crowley's on their cover. Oh, yeah. There's so many weird people on and that, that cover. And that, like, that's yeah. not just a coincidence. Mm. I mean, one of them dudes was like. I don't I don't know which one of them, but mm -hmm. you know they they probably got that knowledge. Yeah, you I know? I also just feel like the Beatles like to do a lot of things for shock value, though. Really, I really do. I really do. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't know. I just can't see them dabbling in that dark stuff. The only one I could see doing that would be John. John Lennon. I think it was you John. Know? I think it yeah. was John. Yeah. He's the only one that would be interested, I think, in that kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was the weirdo. He was kind of a weird one. Yeah, he was curious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas, like, George was more curious in the Eastern philosophies. And, I like, I'm obsessed with George yeah. Harrison right now. Why, why is that? Um, I, you got to listen to his album, all things must pass Yeah, because it, it, that album has like gotten me through the last like handful of years because it's just like, 
like all things must pass, you know, and that song is like, it's just so, it's so beautiful. What know? about Paul? I like Paul. I like Paul. There's a conspiracy about him. I know, I know. Okay, so I don't want to make <laughs> this, this a conspiracy. But dude, I, love I was it. Let's on do it. Instagram. Okay, wait, really quick. What's the fourth agreement? What's the yeah. fourth? Always do your best. Always do No, your- I said that one. Uh, don't make assumptions assumptions. yeah see and that so really quick that ties in with like we can't just assume that you know that guy hates you and if he does hate you well who gives a shit you you bring up something to him that bothers him and that's his fucking problem you know what i'll be you know and you know what you do when next time you see him hey man how you doing no, I don't do you that. You can't do that? No. Oh, man. I do. Ca- I cast just... spells, too. You do? Yeah, so yeah. you're thinking you're talking shit in your mind. I, I do. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I do. I say I things under my breath. I oh, know. you do. I don't yeah. Shit. I shouldn't do yeah. that, though. Yeah, well, it's just You know a, what? I apologize. Here's why. It's right. just a waste of your energy. Yeah, you're right. It's like, fuck him. I, you know, kill him with kindness. Yeah. Like, hey, guy. You know? <laughs> hey, <laughs> buddy. You know? <laughs> or maybe I'll bring him a gift or something. <laughs> bring, but him going, on, bring him on the podcast and hash it out. Maybe. <laughs> no, no. Maybe. But, no. Um, okay, because I don't want to let this go as far as Paul. No, okay. So according okay. to, I saw something yeah. where. I there watched is, the whole documentary. Oh, you did? Okay, where there's a look like he's got a doppelganger. Yeah. Paul McCartney yeah. really died, mm-hmm. according to this conspiracy yes. theory, yes. on this certain date. Yep. And there's a look-alike mm-hmm. that's From been a contest po- that's been posing yeah. as Paul McCartney the Ever whole time. Since. And what's his name? Can you look oh, that up? Oh yeah, it's in that. S- it's in the song. Um, um, it's um, oh my god, I can't believe I don't know this. But he looks exactly yeah, like him. Yeah, I know. And I heard that because I, I, because I kind of believe in clone. Like there's like yeah. cloning centers. Totally. To, yeah. Too, you know, because yeah. I've seen those conspiracies. Billy Shears. Billy Shears. Yeah, Billy Shears. So, yeah. so. They're saying that Paul really died, mm-hmm. and the this guy, guy that Billy, took his spot yeah. is really Billy Shears. But what's so hard for me to believe about that is like, did Billy she- was he just a really gifted musician as well? I mean, no, because there's a thing I think on they're they're doing they're trying to um they have these vocal st- vocal stems mm-hmm. where now they're they're trying to I think that it's on like iTunes they're like at this documentary where they're trying to do this new song with Paul's old vocals so that oh, ma- yeah, they did that they makes did, yeah. sense because Shears doesn't have to go in the vocal booth because they have o- Paul's old like stems no but think about all the music that Paul has made over the years I mean. You know, because if when Paul, the real Paul McCartney died, that was like when was six, that? Like sixty eight or six, you know, early, early, early sixties. And then um, th- Wings. Think about Wings. Think about solo Paul McCartney. Mm. I mean, there's. So, I mean, he's still touring. You know, so is he? Yeah. So Billy's doing it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I it's, with the vocal coach. And but I mean, did he learn to play all these instruments then? You know. Yeah, but with technology. No, he's really. He, I mean, dude, Milli Vanilli just, literally he... had a career <laughs> with. Remember until the the thing skipped the CDR skipped. Can you skip, believe, can you I, believe I, the baby, CD? You get I my like number, the, my number. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so bad. It's so funny. I just watched that the That's other day. That's a concert, and they were just lip. They're. I know. Yeah. I'm so thinking. you're saying, yeah, you they can get so away with it. Happy. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I I used to really kind of buy into the Billy Shears like conspiracy thing. Yeah. I just don't know. I mean, the only thing that I could think of is that Billy Shears just happened to be a really great musician and, and songwriter. Yeah. But for that to be maintained for so long, yeah, just seems so difficult. You know, and I and don't know. You- do you think there he's getting paid good money to you got it? I mean, because that's I mean, whether, an investment. Whether it's Billy Shears or Paul McCartney, yeah, that fool is rich as fuck. So he's chilling. He's chilling. God, Forever. I wish I could have a gig like I that. I mean, his his great great grandchildren will, will be, be chilling. Set. Yeah. So did you hear about the one with like um not Rihanna? Oh, Eminem. There's a thing about Eminem oh, there, too, well, here, where okay. they have like. Don't even tell me yet. Yeah. Because to me, like. 
I love Eminem. I do too. Shout out to Eminem. Yeah, Eminem's yeah, the yeah, shit. Yeah, he, Sobriety yeah. too. Yeah. But like, recovery. His, his face looks different to me now. That's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't look like him at all anymore. That's what I'm saying. They, they're, they're, what there's happened? a conspiracy <laughs> where, where his whatever the clone took his spot. Okay. And, and um, Eminem's hiding out. Yeah. Chilling. Okay. Yeah. Can I tell you even yeah, the worst conspiracy? Yes. What I because me and Ryan were talking about <laughs> this driving to Topanga. <laughs> I believe the world ended in, you know, when the Mayan calendar, mm-hmm. ended, like in 2012. 2012, yeah. I think something happened okay. with the Mandela effect. Oh, oh, like things got. I think that what happened yeah. is the world really ended. Uh huh. And we got shifted to another, time, another timeline. Okay. And we just got jumped to another timeline. Mm-hmm. That's why it's like all. But then why aren't we on the timeline with the real Eminem? That's well, sucks. I think with that <laughs> stuff, with the cloning centers and stuff, I think that. It's so like, and I think that aliens are involved with that too, with the technology and yeah. the, like the the tubes and stuff, mm-hmm. and like, you know how um, a lot of alien greys they'll um, they'll abduct cows and oh, humans, okay. and they because they could wipe out your memory too, yeah, totally, and they they could easily duplicate a human and yeah, you know what I mean, probably yeah. Because that would suck if I were to die and they're like, oh, you got to come back and it's just me again. I'm like, well, at least pick. can I pick a different? Well, no, it wouldn't just be you um, again. It'd be a whole new. But I wouldn't want my consciousness oh, to yeah, be no, put in a. Well, it will be, but you'll still be wiped, but it'll be your consciousness in there. Because like your whole consciousness, it is in there. But yeah. But you have very limited, limited, uh, you know, capacity to yeah. reach all of it, you know. So go back to Eminem's facial okay, structure. Okay, okay. And here's the other thing, is that Eminem really can't do do it like he did. You know, with what his I'm saying? rapping and stuff. Yeah, and even with performing live, I feel like he's so uncomfortable doing it, and I think he's had to like kind of lip sync through some things. But also, that can just happen from getting older and from not being young and fucked up, um, and kind of losing your confidence in a way. But and the face thing with. But how could know? the doppelganger learn how to rap like Eminem? But if it's a clone. Oh, then because that's the alien technology can implant those raps into his head. I guess. Because I think even Rap God, mm-hmm. I think there's a meaning behind that. Well, maybe like he is a rap, like his doppelganger is kind of like a rap god because with the alien stuff mm-hmm. in him now, <laughs> where he, he could just conjure up these like multisyllabic rap and stuff you know what i'm saying yeah, maybe. and then now with even like with um what's that chad whatever where they could duplicate your voice like, oh like AI. And the ai uh-huh. yeah man mm-hmm. they have so many sound bites of eminem anyway and so yeah. they could put that those vocal things in the the robot yeah is whatever but is it a robot if it's a clone then it's an it's a it's a biological human. entity bio- yeah so it's like that biological entity could have the same ability of rapping because if it's a oh, exact man. clone do you well know what what's I'm okay so what are you what are you saying <laughs> it, so are you saying that it could possibly be a clone like blade runner like the look i i feel like synthetic anyone or? that may be watching this maybe like megan holiday or a kook whatever i don't care but Anything's possible to me. Me too. And and since you know, I did notice like I've literally like looked zoomed in on pictures of Eminem, but then I also have to be like, okay, rationality. Maybe he got some work done. Maybe he's just aging and he just this is how he's aged, you know. So M to clear this up, hit me up um on Eminem, my so IG. Shit, dude. Marshall cleared Mathers up, LP for life. Clear it up here on the Stevie Weeby yeah, show. Let's talk out. it out. Yeah, let's hash it out. We'll go through I'll your I'll be whole... here, too. I won't even be on the show. I'll be yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Em, holler at me. Yeah. We're a fan of your work. Dude, I love Eminem. I do, too. Like, when I need to get into kind of just like a mode, Yeah. like, I will throw on Eminem. But what I really like to throw on is the Chronic 2001. Oh, yeah. That's So like, shout out to Dr. Dre. Dude. Okay, but also... Hang on, Dr. Dre. What if he's, he's a, not gonna what like if this. he's a clone too? Well, dude, how come Because he's looking different come, too. I know. But how come he and how come he can't fucking make shit anymore either? Cause did you watch the um the dude, Defiant ones? Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I saw maybe so, the first part of the series. So like there is a part in that where he like sits down to kind of like try to like write like flow and like do some shit and it's like and he can't. 
Like he doesn't have Dre. Yeah. Dre doesn't have, he doesn't have it anymore, you know, but I know that that also can just happen as you get older, you know, you just, Mm. you don't have that same spark. It's like certain things just happen in a time, you know, I, I well, don't know. It's hard to get up when you have satin sheets. You I, know? <laughs> yeah, I'll say. He's not at the Rocky Balboa eating egg yolk so phase. Can I just tell you right now? Yeah. I just watched Rocky Balboa for the first time two nights ago. Two nights ago. What did you think about it? Did you get How emotional? How the fuck are you bringing that up right now? Because you want to know why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, okay. we're both, we're, what's your sign then? Libra. Okay, we're both Virgos in oh, here. Oh, I love Virgos. Virgos and Libras uh, are oh, like... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're cool, don't worry. We're um, cool. So yeah. we didn't mean to <laughs> scare you with the conspiracy <laughs> theories. Okay, wait, but, Rocky Balboa. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, so eggs? Rocky Balboa, Um, <laughs> I I really... The, 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 the scene that really kind of resonated with me is when he got a chance for the prize fight with uh, Apollo Creed and they gave him a shot and because w- Mickey, you know, because Mickey was, you know, he was getting older and then he started because they treated him bad at the gym Mm -hmm. remember yeah yeah remember they cleared out his locker Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then that's the original rocky yeah yeah Yeah. but then when remember uh mickey goes to his apartment yeah yeah and then that scene yes i got emotional Uh uh-huh because that's like well where were you back then now you want to mess now you want to fuck with me because i'm getting the shot yeah well, and did you watch uh, the the Sly documentary recently? Mm-mm. Oh, you got to watch it because they talk about that exact scene. What do you mean Sly in the family stone? No, Sylvester Stallone. They oh, call, that's his nickname. <laughs> Sly. Sly. Oh, Sly. Yeah, yeah, Sly yeah. Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, there's a new documentary that came out and he's talking about that exact scene. And originally in that scene, it was like, I don't think that there was going to be a redemption. It was like he was just going to be pissed at Mickey, you know, like, fuck you. You know, you didn't help me before. But he said what the redemption was, is that he then realized, no, like, I got to do the right thing. And Mm. he ran downstairs and he ran after Mickey, you know, and he grabs him. Oh, at the end of the scene. scene. When he cuts away. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. And and like it, it was like. Talk about like keeping your side, like taking the high road, really. You know, you're and you know what I like about that scene because there's a time lapse where he doesn't do it right away. He's yelling, he's still yelling and yeah. venting yeah, in yeah, his yeah, apartment. Yeah, totally. As as uh, Mickey's yeah, going down the yeah, stairs, yeah, because Mickey has his head down. Yeah. and then you're right, mm-hmm. that hits home. And then he goes after him, and he's like, "No, it's okay." And then he like, hugs I him. You. Yeah, he like, hugs him. You train me, you know. God, there's something that was so nostalgic and great about those first. Um, I like the first three or four Rockies. So you know what's funny? I can't even believe that you're bringing all this up because I, so I was like telling my boyfriend like a month ago, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I've never seen Rocky. Mm. I know. I know. I was like, I've never seen it. You haven't seen two yet? Dude, I just watched the first one about a month ago. And then we just watched Rocky Balboa like two nights ago. Oh, that's like five or six. Yeah, I know, but it was okay to skip ahead. Yeah, it's fine. But watch two. I will. I will. I will. I mean, I'm hooked now. I I love it. I just, I absolutely love these movies. Yeah, because one, um, he's an unknown. Uh huh. You know, yeah. just a guy at the gym, right? And uh, but then two, it's almost like because Apollo's kind of pride gets in the way, like. Because he knows, like, did I really win that fight? Oh, yeah. so he wants to make sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh-huh. this one's going to be. The real fight. The, yeah. yeah totally. So I think actually one and two are the bangers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got to yeah. watch two. That's so weird. So what made you want to, um, just out of nowhere, you want to see Rocky? Yeah. I just, yeah. I, I, oh, because I watched the Sly documentary. And oh. I go, and I'm like, I can't believe I've never watched Rocky. I just you know he wrote those. It. I know and directed. Yeah, it's crazy. He's Very a, talented guy. Well, and you want to know what? You know how he talks all like, <laughs> like Adrian, so, yeah. so, <laughs> hey, so Paul. he has that disability from birth. It's a fucking disability. Like his mom went into labor when he was uh, when she was on the bus or what, something. The way he you know, the way he talks. It was a uh, his uh from being paralyzed right there. So this whole time, everyone's oh, like making fun know. of him, and he was like born with this, yeah. you know, thing. Like, Did you see First Blood, um, Ram- Rambo? Ne- First Blood. I've never seen any Rambo's. You haven't never seen. seen no. Nope. You haven't I seen know. Rambo First Blood. I've never seen Rambo. If you like Rocky, yeah. you have to watch <laughs> First <laughs> okay. Blood. Okay. 
It's a must. It's probably one of my all-time <laughs> favorite okay. movies of all time. Oh, my God. Of all time. Okay, okay. okay. I, I take mean, that. I, I'm internalizing that deeply. Okay. Do you know the, some of those movies where year, like a decade could go by, a, a week could go by, and you could just put it on? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's like time had never yeah, passed. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those movies. Okay, okay. Where you could just... There's only a few of those. Yes. Like the original Karate Kid's one of them mm-hmm. for me. Rambo First Blood is yeah. one of them. Like Goodfellas is oh, one yeah. of them. Yeah, totally. Um, maybe the first half of uh, Saving Private Ryan <laughs> is one of them. Uh, yeah, there's certain ones. Uh, oh, No Country for Old Men oh, is yeah. one of them. Yeah. There's certain ones. Mm-hmm. That's one of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like they're timeless. Uh, you know. Yeah. I I don't know what. I think, okay, because, you know, in my family, it was like, th- like, my mom will never see Rocky in her entire life. Why? Do you know what I'm saying? She's just not, like, my mom or dad just will, they'll, they'll never see those movies ever. But that's her era. Yeah, but she's just not that's interested. When this but she's just not interested in that kinds of thing. So there were a lot of movies that I missed out on because they never entered our home. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So... But now I get to discover them. What are some of, some of your favorite movie, like the ones that are classic in your mind? Oh man, um, I like more. I mean, <laughs> so I remember, like it was like the movies that were coming into my house were like you know like Forrest Gump. You know what I mean? Oh and, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, dude. That's a good I, movie. I like say I'm say I'm somewhere where only cable is available, okay? Say yeah. I'm in a hotel and there's only cable available mm-hmm. and I'm scrolling through and Forrest Gump is on, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it on the channel. D- are you a Tom Hanks fan? I am. I like him. There's a conspiracy about Tom Hanks, I too. I know. I know it. Okay, I so one it. last one. <laughs> okay. So there's one where, according to this conspiracy, he died too. <laughs> he died too. I oh, think, I don't know this one. I think so. Oh, that's oh no, not no, the no. One he didn't. No, he didn't, like, no, he didn't no, die. This is like he was in charge. He was. He's a part of this the, group yeah, where the pedophile, the pedophilia, yeah, th- oh, uh, kind of. Should I not say Maybe. It? Oh, sex trafficking. What is it? Well, th- he was a part of this group where this one guy knew about them, and he was a part of like getting rid of this person oh, or, or something what? like that. Okay. Like, I don't want to spread okay, di- I disinformation. Look, but, you know, he, that's probably not true. We're talking, we are talking about conspiracy theories that exist. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. There was something weird also during, like, the, with the COVID thing, him being in Australia. I remember that being tied in as well. Yeah. And, but it's, I don't know. I, I kind of think in some ways these conspiracy theories are just kind of fun to rattle around in your yeah, brain. Yeah, maybe he's. But, but you d- we just. I don't want to believe know. it because Tom Hanks. I don't want to believe it either. Yeah, because I, really I grew like up him. with Tom Me Hanks. Too. I, like I don't want to, you know, I mean, uh, Splash, Big, mm-hmm. Saving Private Ryan. Can I throw one in, in there? Yeah. That thing you do. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Girl, have you? What? You guys, uh, come on. When, when was that released? Okay, it came out in the 90s. And it was like a Tom Hanks kind of brainchild like it's basically about a band who oh, form yeah and the soundtrack you know in the song and um they you know they come together as a band it's kind of the rise and fall of a band and tom hanks yeah write this down tom hanks plays their manager so he's not in the movie a ton but Say it again it's called that thing you do oh how about this tom hanks movie catch me if you can so good He's you been know? in too many. He's been in so many. That thing that you do. That thing, that thing you do. That thing yeah. you do. Yeah. Okay. I like in um. I like in uh, Catch Me in, If You Can when he's like in the car. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, knock knock. Who is it? <laughs> he goes, go fuck yourself. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Um, isn't Leo in that too? Oh yeah, Leo's. I mean, wait, wait. The you way can. you said that, I mean, he's on top of his game right he's now. He's on top of his game. Have you in seen that movie? Too. Have you seen the, the Killers of the Flower Moon? No. 
Is it good? I just bought it. I just watched it the serious? other night. Yeah. Because why is it getting so much like? I aren't like, people saying that it's not that great? I liked it. Okay, it's just with, long. with Robert De Niro. Yeah. Okay, it is. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, I liked okay. it. Okay. All right. So you're saying Leo's on top of his game? He's again, a good right now. His he's, acting's real good yeah, in that. He's really fucking good. He's got like the southern thing going on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's really he's good. He's just fantastic. Yeah. Everything he does. Yeah. Everything he does. But Catch Me If You Can. That's a movie I can watch <sighs> over and over and over again. Mm-hmm, it is mm-hmm. so fun. I love a con artist. I love a con artist Why is movie. That? I don't know. I, d- I don't know. I just think I think it is just so awesome how you can honestly convince anybody of anything if you are confident enough. Yeah. See, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Inventing Anna. Yes. Oh, yeah. Inventing Anna. Yeah. About uh, what's her name? Anna. Anna. I know we've uh, we've all we've all forgotten already, but yeah, the the New York con lady British kind of accent. What's her name? But that was a good one because I don't know. It's it's so crazy to me that yeah. you can really convince people to do just about anything for you, right? You know, if you just with I like mean, mind control or something. Or no, I honestly just think it's confidence because people want to naturally people want to believe other people and they want to believe that they're being told the truth they just do i mean look at politicians that's how politicians get elected and just in general and they're the biggest and they're the biggest cons they're the biggest con artists you know but people are looking people so badly want to believe you know, yeah. the people are, are good and what they're telling them is true. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm obsessed with like psychology and criminal yeah. psychology Absolutely. and interrogations, mm-hmm. how these people like it's such a mind game. Oh, yeah. The way they could they try to trick the police mm-hmm. and then, the, you know, and then and then how the police trick them. Oh, they're know? they're, they're cr- they you know do they're some doing. mind yeah, games. They sure do. There's different techniques. they yeah. use. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. yeah, I love it. It's incredible. Time flew by. Is it? What time is it? It's already an hour has passed. Are you serious? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's gnarly. So, um, when, so when Ryan and I and you, we got to do maybe do another like a vlog or something. Oh my god, I would love that. Oh yeah. Or we could go somewhere. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm so down. Yeah. I want to do some just some paranormal. Maybe we could go to an alien convention. Yeah. Maybe Chelsea um, you could film it or something. Oh yeah, Chelsea I'm down for talk. any and all of that. And like a, yeah. just a final word on Ryan just being the fucking best. Yeah, you just, gotta. He is one of the genuinely he's kindest pure. people. He's pure. Mm-hmm. He's always like believed in me and supported me and mm-hmm. just been like a cheerleader. And um, he's he's mysterious, but also it's like you feel close to him and far at the same time if that makes sense like he's I, genuine he's genuine yeah. and i don't know every detail about him but i know who he is yeah a human being, yeah and i love him you oh know? me too yeah yeah um support um ryan's uh paypal we're trying to get him a teardrop camper rv oh, so what? yeah because he know that because he's he's gonna possibly be going off really, really off, going the grid. off the grid he's <laughs> really going off the grid so definitely um I'll have that on this episode okay. too. His PayPal, like you know, yeah, do what you can, you know, because I don't want him to, you know, I want him to be secure oh, and one, safe. Yeah, one thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. a little Need teardrop. Have, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't burn. So supplies, yeah, because he could live. He could survive. He's a survivalist. Oh, yeah, he, absolutely. Yeah. He just, you know, I'd, I'd feel better if he had like, yeah, you a know, whole, like a protect, like mm-hmm. like a r- real roof yes. where you know. Okay, yeah. Cause yeah. I, I watched your guys' vlog, but I didn't watch the episode. Yeah, yet, so. well, we're trying to, yeah. you know, he's, um, yeah, he's going to be doing, um, like a bi monthly, monthly where, you know, he, like, see all those cardboards on the edge? Like, he, yeah, he, he got, he's going to get into, so, you know, he does research with, you know, mm-hmm. he's a deep thinker. Yeah, oh, I know. So, yeah, yeah, so he, he's going to go, he's going to go deep into yeah. some subject matters. Um, can we, um, since we're at the tail end of this, can we, um, plug your, um, um, Instagram, yeah, and then I and then maybe that. plug your uh, time slot with K Rock totally. yes. and, and all um, that. All right, so you can follow me at Megan Holiday, mm-hmm. and that's M E G A N spelled the regular way, and Holiday with one L, mm-hmm. the old fashioned way. Um, you can hear me on K Rock 
from uh, every day from 2 to 6 p.m. If you're in the Bay Area, you can hear me on Live 105 from noon to 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. And then if you're in Sacramento, you can mm-hmm. also hear me up there. Do you guys play Blink-182? Oh, yeah. We play the shit out of Blink-182. All right. Yeah, Tone Tom it down Long. A, Tone it down a little bit, though. <laughs> on... Tom, shame on you. No, I've Tom reached, DeLong. No, I've reached Tom out to Tom DeLong. You. Oh, did you? I went to high school with You did? Yeah. I didn't know that. That makes sense, though. That Can makes I show sense. you the yearbook real quick? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Just, get, hold on. Just, just give me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Hold on. Can I film this? I need to get this in here. Oh, my God. I'm, I am Tom, I'm just kidding. I love Tom, I love you. Have you talked to him recently? No, I I'm trying. I've been trying, trying to get. I've okay. been trying to. He's hard to. Get to get he's hard to yeah. wrangle. I've interviewed him a couple times. So Tom, look, Tom DeLong, comedian. Tom and DeLong, where? Where is right he? Right there. That's him. Yeah. Oh my and God. And then he was also homecoming, homecoming king. Was he really? Yeah. He. What? All the kids like. All everyone loved Tom. I mean, what's not to love about Tom DeLong? Um, hold up, let me see. And here. Tom has really done a lot for for the alien community. Correct. You want to see his uh, yearbook picture? I'd love to. Okay, there's me. <gasps> all right. <laughs> and then let's oh my get God, to Tom. So cute. Let me get to Tom. Uh, he's eight. Hold up, let's get in here. Is your name Steve or Steven? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right. yeah. Okay. <laughs> no one. Who's counting? Um, <laughs> try to find them. Okay. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're in the D's. Where is he? He's got to be around here. Oh my god! Shut up right now. That is so epic. I love this. Isn't that crazy? I love, I love my life. Tom, right now. holler at me, man. We'll I do know. a thirty-minute, do a thirty-minute interview, dude. Tom, you would love come this on, show. Come on, dude. I'm, come on, man. You would love this show. We went to high school. Mil- yeah. Come on, Did dude. You, were you friends at all in high school? He was friends with everybody. 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 We could do. Well, how about next time? Yeah. For your part three. Okay. We'll do. We'll just we'll talk, talk about, about Tom. Tom DeLonge. Yeah. I'm totally down. He, you know, he was probably one of the first skateboarders on. You know, yeah. at Poway. Yep. I remember he could kick flip back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And man, I w- you know, and shout out to my homie Rich Salo because I like I try to, I'm like, how do I get a hold of Tom? And um, and then I and then because Rich, oh, um, I wrestled with Rich. He was on the wrestling team with me, and he was f- close with Tom. And I had a call. I had a call to the um, star, uh, whatever, whatever, to the oh, stars. Oh, to the stars academy. Yeah. yeah. And then I had to talk to the receptionist. I'm like, and I'm like, I had to convince this lady. I'm like, I went to high school with them. Please, uh-huh. I, mean, I mean, just want you know, I have a <laughs> podcast. And Tom, it's tough. It's tough. I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. My friend, my oh, really, good, yeah. my really good friend from high school manages Tom. But there were even times <laughs> when I. Try to get Tom on my podcast, and my buddy was like, I don't know, I don't know, no. So you, you never know. So we'll, I'll see. I'll see what I can do. 30 minute interview. 30 minutes. You don't have to even cut, then we'll skateboard, you know, we'll yeah. hit up Nicholas, we'll go to the, <laughs> you know, Tom, please. I feel like he'd enjoy coming and seeing his yeah, yearbook. You, you think I re- so? I think he'd love it. Yeah. Did he sign it? Did he? I don't know. I hope well, he that's did. for part three. Okay, part three. Hey, thanks for coming. This was so fun. Um, oh, Go to patreon.com slash stevieweeby to help support the uh, platform. And everything else would be in the um, description of the YouTube channel. Um, peace. Peace wow. and love. Hiding in the crevices, in the coral premises. In my neverland like Peter Pan checking messages. I feel like it's the way that you